Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Papa Bale. Welcome to the channel. Um, I'm just going to show you what I've done. Just going to put some voltage into it, about seven and a half. I'm going to spin it up. See if we got enough momentum there. It's like it's slowing down. There we go, that should do it. Hopefully. I don't know how it got so, like, uh, lethargic. <laughs> kind of happened all of a sudden, too, but yeah, we're pulling 8 amps. As long as that keeps going up, we are good. All right, moving along. So, we have a trigger coil set up here. We have one strand of 40, uh, 24 gauge, which will be 200 turns. You can see how our lights are illuminated on our uh, filtration, rectifier, regulator thing. Okay, we're gonna let it just build up a little bit. 1.4 amps now. Now I'm going to give this a spin. Just to show you that it's working. So when the trigger coil triggers, let's just spin it slow and show you that nothing will happen when we spin it slowly. Alright, and now we're going to whip it, and it's going to engage. Now it fills up pretty fast, but not as fast as this thing spins, obviously. Boom. Alright, we are now drawing power, because the trigger coil is triggering. Now, what I had to do to get this to function properly is to put two connections on the emitter. One going back to the unit and one going to the ground. See, and that'll remain pretty low. One time I had it going slow enough that you could actually see it charge up before it would hit again. Right now it just seems to be way ahead of the charge, but it's still getting juice. I mean, ugh. cat, takes. sorry baby. So that is constantly being drawn from, and so those lights are remaining deluminated. Now, I'm gonna stop this. See? So this is definitely functioning. It's like it's taking what's in there that might be the goal to see yeah you can kind of see a little red maybe but yeah that's, that's definitely a win for DC I do have a 275 AC uh, capacitor with like 0.4 microfarad, so it, it just fil it's a filtration really, it's not, it is a capacitor but it's really just to scoop the energy through and maybe, you know, just more smoothly. Now, if we start generating power faster than we're spending it, we'll definitely see it light up a little bit. Maybe it already is. I can't. I can't tell. 
that's sweet because that pulse motor loads that thing up in less than a second basically and those lights are really bright here let's stop it real quick one two three about three seconds I got it spinning slow. There it goes. There it goes. So this is the RPMs that that'll function at. And you can actually see it work. It's great. That is freaking awesome. And I don't have a tack strip, so we're not going to be able to see... Uh, exactly how many RPMs that thing is going but it's it's going at about 800 I would assume 700 800 RPMs it's extremely heavy so like the flywheel capabilities of this thing is awesome um, I've also built a stand to run that motor um, the other way See, right now it's Wheel of Fortune. I'm talking like Price is Right. See what I mean? And it's actually more well-balanced than I originally thought. Because it'll... It'll work that way. It'll work this way really well. And then another thing that I'd like to show you real fast. If I can just kind of scooch on back here. Oh, I think we dropped below where we're actually triggering the coil. Yeah, we're not we're not generating as much power as I usually do. Um, but this this rotor is freaking awesome because you got the north and the south side showing on either side. So north and then south on the other side. They're not like alternating or anything, but they are opposing. So you can set up coils on either side of it to get the desired effect. Mm. All right, I'm going to whip this now, and we're going to see if it will continue to go. Uh, with both pulse motors going and being grounded to the power supply, we are drawing 3 amps. So it's about 21 watts to run both of these right now. Totally awesome. Yeah, I don't have any readings right now because I don't know exactly where to hook up the meter to. It's like I want to get, I don't know what reading I want to get. So if anybody has any suggestion, suggestions on which, where I should hook it up at, what reading you'd like to see, I'll show you anything you want to see. But don't tell me what I'm looking at. Okay, don't tell me that I'm doing free energy when I'm not. For those of you who stuck around long enough to hear me say that, you, you people right there. But uh, honestly, I think the pulse motor runs really, really, really well. The second pulse motor runs really, really, really well on the power supply because I was testing out the coil to see if it worked the trigger coil and it's awesome look at this freaking thing dude oh my god it's so smooth so smooth 
quiet. It's so quiet. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, we're going to roll with trigger coil and transistor. I don't know if it's going to work. Hopefully it will work. Um, see, I want to I wanna unhook this from the ground. So we'll cut the power. I'm not shocking myself. Shocking myself once tonight. I'm not doing it again. Especially not at 3 amps, man. I'm not, I'm not messing around with that. The only problem is that rotor is a little lopsided. So I don't know. That's really weird because it's supposed to be on the generator side of things. just ticks me off. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm kind of bummed. Okay, it has to be grounded. That's what the problem was. But it won't spend the energy unless it's hooked up to the negative V as well. So that's cool. I believe that'll keep spinning at least for a while. All right, and that's that. With that, and the, the, the air gap on this thing is so much more than it was before. I mean, that's why it's moving so smoothly with cores on it, is because everything's backed out so far. And just, that's that's the way it is and that's awesome and that way we're bar barely generating enough to run the motor but yeah thank you very much peace out have a good night please subscribe bye now